the first question I have here is will version 4 change the way tournaments are played? How many points is this one for? It's for 25 points. For 25 points. <laughs> cool. Start for 25. Okay. Version 4, um, yes and no. If you don't want it to, it won't change anything really at all. Uh, the only thing that um, needs to really be addressed by a tournament organizer organizing a, term, a Version 4 tournament is how they're going to decide on the missions and who's going to attack and who's going to defend in the missions because Version 4 um, doesn't have the infantry mechanized armor division or assignment of um, units right. so you need to use some other mechanism and we've proposed a few in our um, various things. So what changes do you think would surprise existing players the most about version 4? If you name a couple of them, what the, the biggest changes Given that um, most of the things that are different have been um, discussed in um, great length at various times by people at the moment, mm -hmm. um, I don't think that uh, the existing players who've been um, looking around the internet are going to be particularly surprised by the existence of the changes. I think what will surprise some people is that the changes aren't as scary as they think. My question to you, would the reduction of indirect anti-tank value on artillery but the increased firepower, what is now going to be the best way to take out tanks and tank hordes? Well, and a tank weapons, as oh. you'd expect. <laughs> so, oh. I could have told you that. <laughs> So if you've got tanks, then obviously tanks with a decent anti tank and firepower and ideally some armour to protect them and mobility and skill and all the rest of it. But um, infantry anti tank weapons are also more effective under version 4 than they were before. Unlike um, version 3 where they had a mixed save, sometimes the 3+, plus, sometimes the 5+. Plus. Most guns, the anti tank guns, the smaller anti tank guns are going to be a 3+, plus save all up, um, bigger things like 88s and so forth, a 4 plus save. And that makes them um, more survivable and more able to um, duke it out with tanks one on one. So for your infantry, they're going to be a key part of their defence. Things like 6 pounders, um, pack 38s, pack 40s, that sort of thing. So will pack 40s be getting the 3 plus save? Um, we've got no pack 40s coming out in the first batch, but yes. Oh, good. It's always the thing. Is it on a medium base? Is it on a large base? Oh, you know, the, 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 the age-old question. Is it's it more on the height of the um, gun rather than the, the size of the base. Kind of exactly. Yeah. This, um, so Pete mentioned in his discussion with, with Luke and Eric and Mitch from the WWPD that national rules are being reduced. Uh, some of them are going, some of them are staying. Are you able to provide us a little bit more clarity on, on exactly what's happening? Not write down each national rule but uh, what is changing and, and how they're changing the most important thing is that um, the unit cards make a huge difference to how the rules can be written mm -hmm. uh, something like for instance British Bulldog which previously required a rule which you had to know and you had to know who it applied to and so forth can just be written on the appropriate card as a change in the appropriate statistic. Mm -hmm. So British Bulldog just is now counterattack 3 plus instead of counterattack 4 plus. So okay. the rule has disappeared. Its effect hasn't. And there's a lot of the um, national rules and national characteristics and things that can be um, disappeared like that. They're still in the game, but they're no longer rules. They're just part of how things work. And Another example of that would be um, a lot of the rules like uh, wide tracks mm -hmm. or fast tank and things like that. Because we have a, um, a mobility line on the card which tells you just how fast you move um, while fighting and tactical speed, crossing terrain, cross country and road, and what your role is to cross obstacles, that gets rid of another big swath of special rules yeah. because they're just written down there as numbers. You don't have to remember that wide tracks does this or overloaded does that. It's all there in the numbers. And um, there's a lot of places where we've done that. Um, even in the rate of fire, for instance, something that's awkward layout or can't shoot on the move or something, we now have two rates of fire, your moving rate of fire and your halted rate of fire. So we can just put those on the cards. So 
lots and lots of rules are vanishing, but their effect is still in the game. The rules that are remaining are the ones that are more um, directly flavour related. So, for instance, um, British artillery was noted as being particularly fast mm. at getting fire on the ground. So we have still a mic target rule. Um, the Americans will still have a time on target rule. The Germans still have um, various rules for things like, for instance, their um, stormtroopers move rule. Mm-hmm. They're still there in a different form. Yep. Talking about that, a lot of the special rules that were national specific have been generalised now. Mm. So, for instance, the ability to, um, instead of um, to taking an assault move, to move um, at the end of your turn mm-hmm. is now a general rule. Anybody can do a skill test and shoot and scoop. As long as they didn't move, they can shoot and then try and back off at the end of it. Likewise, anybody can attempt to do a blitz move, a 10 centimetre move, before they move. If that's all they do then they haven't moved and the count is being stationary. Or they can then move on further, which can speed them up. Or people can do an Avanti-style move with follow me. You know, move and then try and push a little bit further. And um, it just comes down to your unit's skill or motivation as to whether they can succeed in those. So the reason for that is that people have been complaining at times, like, oh, the Germans get to do stormtroopers, but these guys did it, or these guys did it, or these guys did it, or vice versa. So by focusing on whether you've got the skill to do it or not, we can do that. So the German stormtroopers isn't now about a specific move. It's about improving their ability to make use of these movement orders. That's good. A lot of people have, have sort of been thinking national rules have just completely gone altogether or yeah. they're only sticking around for the Americans and the Russians are going to get hosed again whereas it's it sort of seems like... It's incorporated like into the actual card itself. Absolutely. Rules rules and rule. so forth. Yeah. yeah, so less rules on paper, actual rules on a, in front of you on a card. And, or well, the unit specific stuff or it's it's available as... Stats as on a card stuff. rather than yeah. rules yeah. on a card. Although there are still some rules on the cards yeah. as well for sure. various things. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of talk about uh, version 4 being a dumbed-down version of Flames of War. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, well for a start, I wouldn't write a dumbed-down version of the game. To, um, so <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think it's dumbed-down at all. It certainly is simpler, cleaner, and faster to play. Um, and the rule book is about a third the size of the current version 3 rule book. Mm-hmm. However, the way we get that is the important thing. In version 3, we've got a lot of flavour text before the rules. And getting rid of that halves the size of the rules and also gets rid of confusion. If you've looked on the forum, you'll often see newbies confusing the flavour text for part of the rule. Mm. So getting rid of that just keeps it clear, this is the rule. The explanation and so forth we'll do in web articles and um, things like that rather than actually in the rules. And then we've actually taken out, as I said, lots of those special rules. They're now just numbers on the card or simpler things. And we've looked at a lot of the rules that were just so complicated that nobody could understand them. (laughs) I mean, a good example of that is hit allocation. Mm. In version 1, it was half a page. By version 3, it's four pages, and nobody but the people who go through it line by line has any idea how it works And even when they allocate the hits the way the rules say, there's often situations where the results are just like, that's not the right result. That's not how it should be. In version 4, we've replaced it with a nice, simple rule that takes about a third of a page. So um, that's the focus hasn't been so much on um, removing stuff. It's just looking at the stuff that's way too complicated doesn't add anything to the game or doesn't add anything worth the amount of writing and thinking to the game and just closing them down. So Make it sounds it simpler. It's, yeah, so it sounds like people are confusing streamlining with, with, dumbing, uh, with down. dumbing down. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the tactical complexity under version 4 is actually considerably greater. The new movement system, mm. uh, the new movement orders, mm. um, and the rebalancing of some of the weapon systems and so forth. So you're talking about artillery, rebalancing it so that artillery is about digging infantry out and digging it out faster 
So instead of spending 20 turns sitting there just going boom, 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 like if you're going to spend a long time digging out infantry, let's just condense that down and make it a little more lethal mm, yeah. so you can get on with the next phase um, again. We make it slow enough that if the uh, opponent's got something useful they're going to do in those lots of turns, they can still do it, but fast enough that it actually gets the game moving again. The Obviously, there's a, the, there's a lot of talk about how the hobby is, is sort of a bit is stagnating, a bit older players have been around for a long time and not a lot of new blood because of video games, whatever it may be, um, is, is not getting them in. But h- how do you think version 4 can help bring both old players who have left the hobby and new players back into the game? I think there's a number of things here. For the older players, the biggest thing is going to be, hey, it's something different and new. Mm-hmm. Um, it's focus on mid-war, which um, they haven't seen for a while, a chance to try something else. Yeah, I'm bored with Shermans and Pershings and Panthers and <laughs> King Tigers and Young Tigers. Let's go back and try something a little lighter and so forth. But as I said, the rule book's about a third the size, mm. which makes it an awful lot less scary for new players. And um, it's got a lot less technical um, than the old rules in a large extent because of the cards and so forth. Mm-hmm. And cards also make it easy for new players because you can just put the cards down and say, look, here's all the information you need. You know, There's not that too many rules. I'll tell you the rules as we go. But here's how you move. Here's how you shoot. Here's how you assault. Um, cool, you've got everything you need. No lockups required. Start playing. Yeah. So I think all of these things will help um, people get into Flames of War. The other thing is we've actually... Um, looked at how we sell the models and tried to make that more streamlined as well. Make them easier to get, easier to stock. Because at the moment, uh, Flames of War is a huge product line for a retailer to stock. Mm -hmm. And by um, only making essentially boxes, so instead of having blister packs where the retailer goes, okay, I'll have four of everything, and you go in and say, cool, I need five panzers, Oh, well, I'll take the four you've got in stock and order another <laughs> one. And the next person comes in and says, there's none of them. Yeah. They'll buy, instead, four boxes of panzers. Yep. Um, and I buy my box of panzers and there's still three left for the next person. It's a bit simplistic, but it mm. does tend to work that way. Because yep. a lot of retailers don't know which things they should stock more of and which they should stock less of. So we're packaging them in a useful block for mm-hmm. the retailer. Yep. Um, And also, by bringing the product range down like that, instead of having hundreds of codes they've got to stock, we're talking about a dozen codes at a time, two dozen codes. Yeah. Much, much easier. Yeah, I think that's um, that's something that Pete sort of alluded to, where you can, with the way that it it plays now, you can select your force, and from the card that you pick, or the, the, the piece of the force that you pick, you can buy a box that corresponds to that card, so you don't have to, like you say, buy... Hmm a box and then two extra blister packs to get the get the pieces you need. I think it's a really great idea. It's great. So like on that, um, buying the list by by the box, version four, how do you think the way the list change how they'll be built? Because you've got what seems like a lot of freedom now. I think that is the, the key thing in that um, we have brought in a multiple company thing mm. where basically what you previously thought of as combat and weapons is now what your company exists of. And then you can buy as many of those companies as you like and then a support block to support them all. And the advantage of this is that players can be a little more free in getting the stuff they want. Hey, I love this stuff and I love that stuff and I love that stuff. Yeah. I'm going to get a company of this company of that, support it with one of these and some of those and so forth. A lot more freedom about how you can construct it. Um, And we've played around with a few things to try and bring a bit more balance in. One of those is, for instance, reserves. So instead of just counting up the units and putting half in reserve and half on the table, Mm -hmm. we've now said, no, no, it's your points that matter. So a little bit more work uh, when you're designing your force. But it means that you've basically got a percentage of uh, points on table and a percentage of points in reserve. Mm-hmm. And that also actually gives you more flexibility in a way because 
you know, people were, oh, and then I'll have to have a couple of cheap units to put in reserve or whatever. <laughs> no. Forget it. You, some of your points are in reserve, some are not. You could just put the interesting stuff wherever you need it. Or hold it off in case you needed to, and then... Mm. That seems like a good idea to me. So with, with the idea that you can now build multiple companies in version 4, does that mean as part of the victory to conditions that you need to, to break both of them to win or just break one? Um, basically, you don't win until your opponent has no combat formations left on the table. Right. Support is okay. Um, and you can actually take allied units. Um, so you can take an allied uh, company. So if you're... British in Tunisia, you can have an American company supporting you. Right. But it's still support. Yep. So it's not going to keep you on so the it table. Doesn't it doesn't when the Homs run away, the Yanks go, told you this wasn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But, um, so yeah, as long as you've got combat troops on the table, you're fighting. Oh. That kind of wheels into one of our questions here, which is, um, which is the best way to take, to win, which is to take the objective or break your enemy. Yes. Ah, good. <laughs> they both win the game. Both win the game. Absolutely. It really depends on the situation you're facing. Sometimes you look at your opponent and go, I'm not going to take that objective. Mm, terrain, not going to get that objective. I'm going to go to breaking your force. Just kill them. Yeah. And sometimes you go, oh, you haven't thought this out carefully enough, have you? <laughs> I just do this, 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 and hammer that hard. I'm on the objective. Mm, yep. That doesn't always work so out like it. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So once a year, it's just like version three, but you have to kill the core and the weapons, yeah. the combat and the weapons. To in make version it. three terms, yeah. yeah, yeah. In version three terms, it's the main stuff. All the support is junk and doesn't count mm. towards your overall staying on the tableness. No, you know? it's still losses of that are still count for victory. I still count for victory, but don't so, don't affect your run. Yeah, they don't keep you on the on the table, but they still cost you if they they die. So they're not cheap or expensive suicide points. They still they still count in victory, but they don't cause you to yeah. leave. Yeah. But you still shouldn't be frivolous with them. Yeah, on account of why you lost your, your, your don't double the time. I won, but <laughs> only just <laughs> don't double your FJ in front of stewards. Yeah, still applies. Always a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks, thanks for uh, reminding me of that. So obviously, version four must uh, have like all new products that that Battlefront are putting down has been through a whole a, a rigorous playtesting um, regime. Um, what surprised you the most during the playtesting of V4? I don't really know how to answer that question. Basically, it's just a process, and when we make a change, I'm never particularly surprised if it works well, and I'm <laughs> never particularly surprised if it needs a, a bit of a fiddle. Um, you know, we think when we propose the ideas and put them into testing that they're all good ideas, mm -hmm. and we've sort of work them as hard as we can beforehand but you know plans don't usually survive contact with the enemy yeah. <laughs> and some rules just uh, that's not what I thought would happen and yeah. uh, they go the way of the dodo and <laughs> some just need a tweak and some of them are like awesome that really worked <laughs> <laughs> I like those rules those rules are great mm. reconnaissance changes now um, people have mentioned it doesn't have the ability to do what it used to its whole eyes and ears removed onto ground that kind of thing anymore what role do reconnaissance type vehicles and reconnaissance armies let's say play in version 4 well the main role of reconnaissance in the game is now to shape the way the battle starts um, if you've got reconnaissance and the missions are mobile type mission where there's a bit of space between the armies then your reconnaissance can move out into no man's land and claim it for you mm -hmm. and they deploy there. In a head-to-head, -head, face to face battle like no retreat, there's not really much space for that. I mean, you know, you're right up in front of the enemy's defences and ready to go. But something like counterattack or something like that, there's room for or dust up, room for some free wheeling manoeuvres around the flanks, and your reconnaissance can be useful for grabbing ground like that. So when you say it pushes your deployment, does that mean your entire deployment gets pushed out? So if previously you could only deploy within the map space, now your reconnaissance has gone forward and occupied the empty space, you can then, say, bring your platoon of T-34s up behind it yep. and already start further ahead. Yep. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. That's yep. very good, actually. I mean, of course, there's still... Uh, well, um, 
Again, we, one of the things with the cards is it's much easier to slice and dice things a little more finely. So whereas something in the past was either a Ricky team or wasn't, and for instance, motorcycle reconnaissance perhaps was an example where that wasn't the best conglomeration of rules going together. Yeah. Now we can slice and dice things. So things can have that spearhead rule we've just talked about, and they can be scouts or they can be both. So um, some things are not particularly sneaky, but they, their job was to grab ground early. Yeah. Some things weren't out there grabbing ground early, but are sneaky like an observer. Um, so a lot of reconnaissance is going to be both of those. It's still going to have sneakiness that it can um, be gone to ground while um, sliding around the table. Yeah. And, um, and that's the main focus of the reconnaissance stuff at the moment. It's still useful for you know, moving around the flanks, grabbing objectives, threatening objectives to tie down troops and so forth. As you mentioned, the old eyes and ears rule has gone. Um, the reason for that is it was never used or working the way it was originally intended. Um, it became a way for people to get rid of what we were trying to do in version 3 by increasing the save of guns mm -hmm. and try and roll it back to version 2 yeah. as one of the big things. And that's why it's now just a flat good save for guns and one of the reasons that can work coming back again to the cards is we can tailor the movement rates and the rate of fires moving and so forth and give the guns the appropriate behaviour without yeah. having them because way back in version 1 when we were doing version 1 one of the issues was that Russian 45s became some of the best infantry in the game <laughs> this was before we put in some extra rules and so forth they had gun shields, they moved as fast, and they shot really well. The only thing they couldn't do was assault. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, things have moved around since then. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, like, again, that doesn't sound like an issue to me. It, it doesn't. It sounds like you're losing something that you're saying wasn't used as envisioned, mm. but the main reason you're moved onto ground most of the time is, well, it's two reasons. One is to fire all your T-34s or Shermans one big volley at the platoon infantry or to call an artillery strike on an easy to hit. But now artillery works completely differently. It's flipped backwards. You target a spot. Mm -hmm. You fire bombardment at it. Yep. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter if they've gone to ground or not. No. And um, in terms of digging out infantry, yep, if you're sitting there with your gun the tanks shooting them up, it's going to be a long, slow mm. task. Yeah. But we've got the tools that they used at the time. Yeah. Artillery, Artillery yeah. and infantry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tanks are not the best things for getting rid of infantry. That's why yeah. infantry still exists. Yeah. If infantry was easy to get rid of with, with tanks, there would be no infantry left. If the Israelis tried that, they thought, you know, ah, oh, we don't need infantry, and then discovered that infantry are actually hard to dig out and had to suddenly get more infantry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's talk about air. Yeah. How does air differ in version four now? So, I, I I never played now. I never played version one and version two. I started with version three, so I understood the air in version one and two was multiple planes. Is uh, that right? Air in version one was multiple planes, but they're all individual planes, and they could go anywhere they wanted. Yeah. Unless you rolled a one, and then your enemy placed them where he or she wanted them to, which was usually on your stuff. Yes. <laughs> and you still had to roll for the number of aircraft. It was one to three that you got in, but yeah. okay. Well, the now I'm going to jump to one side here. One thing we haven't mentioned is that we've got, in a way, two versions of version four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. There's the mid-war version, which is pure version four, yeah. and then because late war is so big and mm -hmm. so complicated, yeah, complicated is perhaps the right word, but also so um, well developed. Yeah. There's no way we can suddenly convert the whole thing to version 4. Mm. So what we've done is we're going to give away a free rule book, and uh, with it, well, this rule book will be slightly different from the mid-war rule book in that it will have conversion information in it, yeah. how to take your version 3 stats and use them in version 4, and how to take your version 3 intelligence handbooks and mm. use them in version 4. So basically, take your existing army and play with it in version 4. Mm. Perfect. And so um, aircraft works slightly differently in terms of um, numbers and so forth in the two. But the fundamentals are the biggest difference is air, aircraft 
um, is a finite resource. Mm -hmm. So previously, for instance, you could just go, okay, I attack your AA. Oh, I got shut down. I attack your AA. Oh, I got shut down. I attack your AA. Oh, I got your AA. (laughs) Cool, there's no more AA. Um, Now, if you get shot down, that's it, you're gone. Your aircraft are fairly tough. They're harsh to shoot down. Mm -hmm. But once they're gone, they're gone. And that's the, the biggest difference. Other than that, um, the other big difference is that bombs and things like that are still artillery. Yeah. Um, and they have very little... Aircraft now are pretty much just flying tanks in a practical sense in the way they shoot and so forth. Okay. Of course, they move by just appearing where they yeah. want because they've got an infinite move mm-hmm. and only AA can shoot at them, blah, blah, blah. But when they're actually fighting, shooting at you, it's basically as if they're flying tanks. Okay. So if they've got bombs, it's an artillery bombardment, and the unit just goes, plant, uh, thump, we're hitting that point. Mm-hmm. If they've got cannon, then they just shoot tanks. like tanks. What about rockets? Like tanks? Like tanks. Like tanks with a rocket? Oh, okay. Like tanks with an uh, artillery okay. piece. Yeah. It's not oh, just yeah. artillery again. A bigger bomb. Oh, so yeah. like, like a calliope or a computer yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger, bigger bomb. Yeah. Sorry, I got confused. So that's, I mean, that, to me, that makes, I suppose, not... It makes fluffy sense because you would never have, or in a battlefield situation, if, for instance, the, the Luftwaffe are going in and bombing things and finding that their Stugas are getting shot down, they're probably reluctant to send more. Mm. Yeah. And also, it's uh, in terms of the way they operate, there's a lot more of the streamlining you were talking about, I like that word, yeah. um, in that very few rules now differ um, unnecessarily between uh, tanks and aircraft. Whereas there are a lot of things where tanks do it this way, aircraft do it this way, artillery do it this way, aircraft do it this way before. Mm. Now, if it's doing the same job, it uses the same mechanism. That seems to me. Mm, that's good. I like that. So you yeah. never take air. Uh, no, I don't take air. <laughs> it, it never shows up, so that's the point. And I'm, I'm sure even in this version, if I took it, it wouldn't show up, so... Yeah. You shoot it down. You, if you shoot it down, sorry, I should come back. Would that also then also be a victory point? You kill all the airplanes. It's a unit. Yeah. Ah, unit destroyed. Unit points for me. Good, good, good. I'll stick but my if it never turns up, it's never going to get shot down. It's shot down, so you don't have to worry. That's right. A unit Ooh. that's perfectly safe. Aside from command stands and staff teams, are there any other units or things that are going to disappear? Well, if you're buying a mid-war army, then the answer is nothing disappears. Because <clears throat> they're just not there. Your artillery battery consists of four guns. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you've got an existing late war army, then yeah, there are rules in that conversion guide that, as, as I said, that say, for instance, your staff team and your gun unit command teams don't exist and your number of observers mm-hmm. goes down. Um, but your infantry, still the same. You've still got your little command stand for your infantry platoon. All the rest of it. Extra pieces. So it's just those um, extra clutter around the gun units that's disappearing. That's good. So it, it doesn't do anything except maybe. Well, you, your break point is always going to be two anyway. So yeah. you have to kill. There's less things to kill to hit the break point, but it's still, you know, with a bigger gun team, you'd have to previously reduce it down to half before they all do a test, but now it's down to two. And they get a bit of safety. down to one. one. Oh, down to one. Yes. Oh, yeah. You're not and testing until you're down to a single gun. Oh, that's right, gun yeah. teams. And, uh, a bit of save, like Greg said, yeah. and you probably shouldn't put them out where they're being shot. It's probably not a good idea. Yeah. No. Unless it's a 25 pounder, which is an awesome anti tank gun. Only if all the rest of your anti tank guns are dead. Nah, nah. Just you move or it's, if you, if you, if you it's quite it a useful dual purpose weapon, I suppose. You put it in the wrong place like I normally do, it's like, now I'm an anti tank gun, oh no. That's what it is for. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> so, uh, and obviously, we're going to the desert for the initial release of Midwall uh, for, for version four. Um, what's next from there? Any plans? Do we do we know what the plans are? <laughs> well, we haven't even got to the desert yet. True. <laughs> yeah, all right, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, we're going to do Eastern Front stuff and so forth. Yep. But yeah, desert is the focus for the moment. We're trying to cover that nicely. Was there a reason? Question not on the sheet. Was there a reason why you went for the desert instead of? Say the Eastern Front? Uh, yeah, the biggest reason is that we get more variety sooner mm. and 
in general, it's a little more compact in terms of releases and so forth, a little more accessible for players. Cool. Um, so, yeah. Cool. And finally, what is your favourite list in version 4? From the ones that have been developed. From the ones that have been developed. Obviously. Obviously. Not the, what do you take from version 3 to make worse in version 4 by being evil? Middle War Marines with late war points. Oh, yeah, that would be so <laughs> good. <laughs> anyway, um, version 4 list from what, what do you have so far? What's your, well, I'd have to go with um, the grants of 3 RTR under the oh, command no. of Pip Roberts. Why? Because I think Pip Roberts was an awesome chap. Um, and um, so 3 RTR sounds like a fun unit, and I've got a, a 3 RTR. So I'm going to have to rebuild it in new plastics at some point because the new plastics are just mm. awesome. Yeah, we've seen those, those, some of the new plastics, especially for... What did we see? We saw the Grant, we saw Grant, the... Sherman, Sherman 25 the Crusaders. Uh, the 88 in actual yes. grey plastic, that was cool. That looked awesome. Yeah. That looks super nice. cool. I can't wait mm. to like, um, lose a whole bit of money. I didn't write it down here, but no heroes? Not in the rule book or in the army books. Okay. However, Andrew is working on some organised play material cool. that is likely to cover um, heroes and things like that, amongst other things. Fantastic. So you can take Pip. Wow. <laughs> 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 or Ritzman. Or Rumble. Or Gravel Voice Guy. Or Jeb, so, what's his face? Or I oh, they're Americans. Gravel Voice Guy. Yeah. Harmon. Harmon. Oh, Harmon. Right. Yeah. Mr. Profane. Well, that guy. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember too many middle heroes. There you go. Well, that's great. Look, um, Phil, thanks for sitting down and having a chat with us. I mean, a lot of there's been a lot of speculation out there, so it's good to get the answers direct from the source, and uh, hopefully, it will allay some of the um, the fears yeah. of the people the that are anger, out there. The anger, the nerd rage. <laughs> we have to stop it. Stop the rage. Stop it now. Smile. That's great. So you. Hi there. Be... Thanks for listening right through to the end. It's Dan here. Normally we'd put this kind of thing into our podcast. However, we decided that it was much quicker to get it out to you via our YouTube page. Hence the pretty pictures and the uh, actual recording with no video. Hopefully this has given you some insights into version four. And if it has, comment below. If it hasn't, please let me know. Anyway, Greg and I would like to thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Oh. But one more thing, we want to offer our listeners, usually viewers, the chance to win uh, the 2011 Flames of War Illinois Ford and the Chest of Mystery Objective. These are very rare. What we're going to do is once we hit 500 subscribers, we're going to offer it up to a winner. We're going to pick from our list of uh, subscribers. So remember to subscribe, tell your friends, and you could win that limited edition objective. Anyway, thanks for listening. Goodbye.